what you believe in, right? Well, can you explain to me what you believe in as, as a whole, like a way of life? What is your way of life? What do you believe? Uh, reciprocity. Do unto others how you would want them to do unto you. You dig what I'm saying? And understanding that there's a time and a place for everything. Without good, without bad, there's no measure for good. You dig what I'm saying? Without evil, there's no measure for, without, there's no measure for good. You dig what I'm saying? So I understand all things. I, say it again. How do you measure what's good and what's bad? Like how, I, who, I guess I'm gonna say this, let me say this. So you may have something that you deem as good and something you deem as bad, right? So how do you, how do you, where's the limit as far as what's good and what's bad? So say for instance, would you want other people to live the way you live? If I don't want you to live by, which one you want to live by those? Uh, yeah, I think, and, and outside of me individually, I think we all collectively have what's called innate knowledge, or what we would consider our spirit. When you born, you, I think we all was born understanding that uh, you shouldn't raise your hand at your parents or murder your parents. You dig what I'm saying? There's certain things you that you just automatically understand. There's some things I say it this way. We have kids. You have kids? No, 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 no. Okay, I'll say this way. And I know you say you don't reference the Bible and everything, but the Bible says that we're born evil. And what I mean by evil is we don't, we don't necessarily know good and wrong. So I have three kids, right? Uh -huh. Now my children have done things that I have never taught them. And on top of that, I keep them away from particular people. They stay with me. Of course. So there's things that my kids have done that I can't figure out where the hell they got it from. So this naturally there's evil in us. Naturally there's evil in us, right? So now you have to say is, so even if you see look, different uh, serial killers, right? Like somebody like Jeffrey Dahmer, right? There's things, even in a story, right? I'm just using him as a reference to the yeah, 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 yeah. right? So you look at something like him. There's things that he did over time that ended up... Uh, well, we can say the DC sniper since we black men. Okay, we can, say, we can say whatever we want to say, right? But my point is, is that there's 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 behaviors that were, uh, that were influenced as he was young, right? That's not good, but... In, in a child, they don't know that it's not good. They just know that people might think they're weird, but they don't know why it's bad because they don't have it in them to do that. I think you. I think. I think humans know. I think children know. I think what happens though is the cognitive dissonance, and you draw back into the comfortability of the habit of doing wrong. You dig what I'm saying? You want something? Okay. Say it again. Say it again. Okay. Catch me this time. So, what happens because you're, what you're when you say you're born evil, right? can't be born exclusively evil because the right, book says you're born right. in God's image, right? Right. So, vote. You have to be born evil. It's it, evil. Exactly. It's, it's duality. Evil. It's duality. That's why I say with no, without bad, there's no measure for good. It's the duality. Right. So, born I think what happens right when you have people who do bad things, yeah. like the rapper, who has used his cognitive dissonance to reason, okay, I'm robbing niggas with this high. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? But his innate knowledge knows that that is bad. However, his cognitive dissonance, the reciprocity, be it good or bad, the reciprocity on that has, has, is his justifiable means of saying, okay, this is how I'm feeding my family. When there's plenty of working people in the world, you robbing working people, right? right. So you could get up and be a working person, but your right. cognitive dissonance has justified you doing this bad thing to reach a good so result. Feeding your family. Something like stripping, right? Is that a good or bad thing? That's a bad thing for sure. What about uh, sleeping with a woman and not marrying her? But, this is my point. Because I can ask a lot of people, like, my brother right here, can I ask you a quick question? My brother with a hat, can I ask you a quick question? My point is I'm gonna ask other questions because a lot of people, it is subjective, but that's, a, that's, that's where the issue would come in, is that when you have, have a, uh, a philosophy of is everybody treat each other the way they want to be treated. The way you want to be treated versus the way you want to be treated is completely different. So now what you see is what you see today, which is you got women that are uh, robbing people, that are setting people up, you got men that are, being, uh, that are uh, abusing women. All these things that are happening where you can just, as long as you can justify it, you can call it good. You can call it that way. So my point is, is that a philosophy like that can be taken and thrown any way you want to throw it. So that's why I ask, what do you believe in? And what you push, what you believe on the rest of your people. And I'm not talking about white folks, I'm talking about the rest of our people. Because when you look at the rest of our people, they live the way you live. 
everybody, everybody prior to like us, we all live the same way. So the point of what we teach is we're teaching our people who they are. We're teaching them nationality. Like we have the Caucasian, we get the Chinese. They have a heritage, they have a language, they have a culture, they have a, a holidays they celebrate, they have all these things to the point that we celebrate what they celebrate. We don't have our own stuff. You see what I'm saying? So the reason why we're in a situation and what you gotta think about, when you look at any way of life, you have to ask yourself this question. Does it tell me who I am? Does it tell me why I'm in the position I'm in today? And does it tell me how to get out of it? If it doesn't do that, whatever you into is trash. Just like Christian church, it's trash. Baptist, trash, Islam, trash, all of it, because it doesn't tell you where you come from. I'm gonna say that because of this. Deuteronomy 28, verse 40. We read the Bible because our history is there. You look at our history as a whole, you see our history in the school books. What we know about our history is what we're taught in school. We find on YouTube, right? That's what we know. We know we went to slave ship. We know we got raped. We know we got sold. We know all that stuff. But outside of how did, why did we get picked up, we don't know why we got picked up. They tell us because of money. Today because of money. You tell me that you rounded up millions of black people, millions of Hispanic people, and brought them willingly on, well not willingly, but brought them on ships. And you were able to have three slave masters some of those, control all these people. Some of those numbers are off though. That's why I was referencing the old mix who was already here. But the old, you yeah, know the entire, were, were the, entire, uh, uh, the entire Congress of this nation. I know we was referencing the United States earlier being right. ran by the European. The entire Congress of this nation used to look like us at a point of time. So the history is definitely scattered. This and the, no, the numbers are definitely skewed. You think what I'm saying? Because our people, the Omex, they were here. The Omex were those Native Americans, those those Israelites that were already here. This was, it, the Bible tells you how the Native Americans got here, the Omex got here. It tells you how we got here. It tells what we were doing before we got here and why we decided to come here. It tells you that nobody was here before we got here, just like in the history books tell you the same thing. So what you're saying is true, but the point is that they, they cover up that history because they don't want you to come back to the book and that makes sense. That's why I don't reference one single book because they say those people that was here first was Muslim. Those are people that came here first. The people came here first with who? Look the Native Americans. Look, look, look at, look at, look at what, look at what, uh, Benjamin Franklin wrote. He said when he, when he got here, he has seen already built not Christian churches, but mosques. There was mosques. Ma, Muslim mosques he has seen already it's built. About Columbus. Columbus. Yes. Columbus, yeah, yes. Right. He said, you're right, 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 yeah, right. I appreciate right. you. Uh, he yeah. said he had he said he had already seen mosques that was already built. You dig what I'm saying? So them brothers that had came over here was Muslim. Well, so they were the same people that were over in Egypt that built the same temples that you see over here. Absolutely. Like if you look Absolutely. In Mexico, they have the same. They got the same, same type of pyramids type of that they had in Egypt. But that's my point. My point is, is that those same people in Egypt that built those things. Give me, give me a uh, where it shows that we built the we built the pyramid. So the same people that are back then building the pyramids are the same people that built pyramids in South America and in North America. Those are the same people, but they don't connect the dots. You know how they don't connect the dots? They tell you that Mexicans or Hispanics and black people aren't the same people. They're not brothers, but we're the same people. They try to disconnect the Native American from the African American when they're the same people. That's why they do the same things. That's why they built the same things. Those black people over there are the same black people that built the stuff over here. The only reason they're separating is because the, uh, because the five dollar Indian. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, read that. Exodus chapter 1 and verse 11. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. So he's talking about the children of Israel, go ahead. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities. So the Israelites built treasure cities, go ahead. Pythrum and Ramsey. So they built these cities in Egypt, just like when they came over. They, that's why you see in Egypt, they can't figure out how they built these pyramids. Huge stones. They can't figure out how they built it. Because the masterminds that built it are the same ones that built the stuff over here. It's the same thing. So my point is, is that they're disconnected history for us, that we can't see ourselves back in the book. Because you might say, okay, there's a bunch of texts out there, but it's the thing. They always, they make everything they make, they make it in a way where it covers up who we are. You, you, you ever notice why we're on the bottom, no matter how, how much time goes by, 
400 years of slavery. You get out of slavery, you got the uh, Jim Crow era, you got the Black Codes, which is still in the bottom. You got uh, MLK, you got uh, Malcolm X. They all come, we're still in the bottom. So then you get to 2000s, and you, get, you keep going down, you got activists, you got Black Lives Matter, we're still in the bottom. Why? Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Perceive. Now, Perceive. Here, here's where I, now here's, this is why I gotta cut into that. Go ahead, right? I wanna hear you. Because in the 19th, we actually uh -huh. had towns that was leading the global economy. We had towns here. That was leading the global economy. You okay. know what I'm saying? Not just in the United States. Yeah. Tulsa, Black Bottom, look it up, brother. We yeah, had, Black Bottom, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we had, we had towns that was leading the global economy. So the China man couldn't even fuck with us. You right. know what I'm saying? That's why they got rid of our towns. What, what, what happened is feminism, uh -huh. okay? You got two people in the household working now. Right. The purpose of it wasn't even for women's rights, it was to tax more than, more than half of the population. But the, the true dent in black people is our lack of family structure. Okay. You dig what I'm saying? So, and I agree with you, but it's the thing. 19, what, 1920s was Tulsa, right? Yes. No, 1920s, right? Yes. Feminism came 1950s, 60s, 70s, right? Yeah. Came all that time, right? Yeah. So you had a family structure coming out of slavery, right? We yes. had a family Still structure, had. we had all those things. But you know what? The white man say, he said, you know what? I got to break that up. Because yes. if I, if I want to prevent Black Bottom, if I want to prevent Tulsa, yes. I got to get rid of what's keeping it running, yes. which is their family structure. Right. So now you see us, we have no family structure. We got baby mamas, yes. baby daddies. Yes. We have all types of evil in our communities now. Yes. Now you right. can't even build that thing back up. There's no way we can build it back up now because we don't have what we need. But I'm going to show you some 2 to 5 to 20. Judas, chapter 5 and verse 20. Right. Now therefore, my Lord and governor. So what's going on here? This is all historical fact. We had two nations looking, uh, observing our people and saying, what? basically telling what's going to happen with these people, telling them the condition of these people. Read on. If there be any error in this people. So he said if there be any error, meaning sin, meaning they're doing anything against their God. Go ahead. And they sin against their God. Uh -huh. Let us consider that this shall be their ruin. So these other nations understand that if, we, if they can continue to keep us in sin, then they can keep us on the bottom. Okay. So as long as we're sleeping around, not marrying our women, not marrying these men, not taking care of our kids, killing each other, selling drugs, right. he said it keeps us in error. Go ahead. Let us go up and we shall overcome them. So he said, as long as we keep them in error, we can overcome them. Meaning we can put them in slave ship. We can put them in the ghettos of America. We can put them in every ghetto we can think of. And they're not going to do nothing but sit there and be confused. And the ghetto is here. The, the environment is not but really the, the envi But the, I'll tell you this. The environment has a has an effect on your subconscious. Because a lot of people, I'm, I didn't grow up in Detroit. Okay. I grew up right, basically right outside. Okay. In Redford. Right, so it looks a little bit different. Okay. The neighborhoods a little bit. When I was younger, they were. Now it's about the same. Okay. But my point is, is that when you grow up in a place that's much more peaceful, calm, your your mind is a little bit different. The way you see things is a little bit different. So when I came to Detroit, I started to see how these people move. I'm like, why y'all do that? That don't make no sense. So I started talking to people. Yeah. Started to understand that what you see around you subconsciously will mess up your mind. You're okay with hearing gun. Like my wife, she from Detroit. I'm hearing gunshots and shit, and I'm like. I don't know where, I'm trying to figure out where it's coming from. Like, he's, supposed yeah. get, he's supposed to get on the ground. I'm like, oh, shoot. Yeah, yeah, but I didn't yeah, up yeah, with, yeah, yeah, But my yeah, point, you like folks look for you. Yeah. not, but my point is, is this, is that- um, Your brain trained differently. Cause with, you, you're trained differently. You're yeah. trained to be accustomed and okay with poverty. Because our people do this. We struggle every single day, 40 hour, 40 plus hours a day to pay for some bull crap in the hood. Yeah. Who wants to live like that? But see, now this is why I say the ghetto is right here. Now it is in your mind, but, right. I, but understand something. Nobody should have to live in the conditions that we live in. Because if you want to, if, if you got a, are you married? No. You got a girlfriend or something? No. no. Okay, so say you got a girlfriend, you got a kid. Uh -huh. Would you take them outside or let them walk down the street by themselves at night in Detroit? Uh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. But if I, I'm not going to say you're going to do the same thing in Livonia, but I will say this. I've lived in Farmington, I've lived in Livonia, I've lived in different places, right? You haven't had to worry about that. And I, I don't have to worry as much. Now, do I trust white folks? No, I don't. But I'll say this. 
I'm more comfortable allowing them to go down the street to come back. Because when I'm in the, in the city, I'm like, I know how my people are. I know that if I send them there, they might not come back. That's not, that's no way to live. That's my point. The ghetto is here, yeah, it's in your mind too, but it's actually a condition. That's why nobody wants to come here. Nobody wants to live here. Go to 328, real quick. 328 and 15. The Bible says, we're cursed in the city. A curse is not a good thing. We're cursed here. All bad things are here in Detroit. All bad things are there in Chicago. So yeah, you can say uh, the ghetto's in your mind, but you live in Chicago, there's bullets everywhere. People are getting killed for nothing. That's not in your mind. That's happening right in front of you, right outside your window. You see what I'm saying? Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So this is the point, is that we don't understand that our people have a the higher power that everybody says they serve. There's only one higher power. He's only the God of one people. That's right. He said, because you, I chose you, I, I created all people. And I chose you to follow me. I gave you that pleasure, that favor to follow me. You chose not to. And because of that, he's going to curse you. Go ahead. To observe to do all his commandments uh -huh. and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses will come upon thee and overtake thee. So God says curses will overtake us, meaning no matter where you go. I can go to Chicago, Atlanta, uh, uh, Alaska, I can go to Europe, I can go to Amsterdam, I can go to Luxembourg. Anywhere you go, you see your people in the same condition. That's not a coincidence. That's, that's not a coincidence. You can't just say, well, I, black people in the ghetto everywhere I go. You see white people there. You see Chinese people there. You see uh, uh, Arabs there. But a lot of times they're there for business, to make merchandise of you. Go ahead. Curse that thou be in the city. God says, our people as a whole, whether you have people that's prospering or not, he said, I'm going to curse you in the city. Wherever you go, you're going to live under curses. Curses are they good or bad. It's a bad thing. So you see, look at our neighborhoods. Oh, when you walk, you just go down the street a little bit, go turn our Eaton, right? That street down here. You turn on that street, you'll see abandoned houses everywhere. Right? Abandoned houses everywhere. People looking on drugs, walking down the street, don't know what's going on, because they either drunk or hot. That's a, that's a curse. We see, and then on top of that, we see these things every day. You got drug dealers that see our people going through hell mentally every day because they're on drugs. You say, you know what? I'm going to keep selling I'm going to keep selling I'm going to keep selling it to them. That's what, not only are those people that are selling it to destroy, but that man that's selling it, he doesn't, he doesn't understand his own work. Right. Because he's selling drugs and killing his own people. We just went to a, 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 a rally or something like that last Sunday. It was a drug, drug awareness movement, right? A young 25 year old, right? He was, he died over uh, a fentanyl. Yep. Over when was fentanyl. this? When was this? It was last week. Last week. Yeah, it was last week, Larry. When did the bro when did the young brother die? Probably about a month ago. I wanna say that was my best friend, cousin. Watch the brother? No. Nah. Yeah, but that's a that's a that's a real thing though, that big dog. But 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 it is a big thing, but that's the thing. If our people wouldn't even give themselves more drugs in the first place, fentanyl wouldn't even be a thought. Right. And on top of that, if our people didn't sell drugs in the first place, fentanyl wouldn't even be a thought. But that's my point is that our people have fallen so far from who they are that they get in these situations. That's why I ask, what do you believe in? We don't believe in religion. We believe in history or who we actually are. I'm not African American, right. I'm not black. Because blacks sell drugs to each other. African Americans sell drugs to each other. African Americans don't take care of their kids. African Americans don't, take care, don't, don't listen to their husbands. Most of the black women listen to their husbands. Do they, do they have husbands? Not all of them. Do they have baby daddies, they have boyfriends. And guess what? They don't listen to them. Why? Because their men don't even know how to take 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 charge anymore. Y'all wanna know what's fucked up about that though? The black woman who don't listen to her black man is a white woman wrapped in black skin. That's it. Because it ain't nothing but a black feminism. body functioning on white women's feminism. It's feminism, exactly. That's it. But that's, that's why I went to Judith this early and I showed you that. They know if they keep us in sin. Sin. And part of being in sin is our sisters not 
listening to their husbands. That's unlawful for a woman that's married to not listen to her husband. That's unlawful. So they know if I switch the positions, just like you ever heard of Willie Lynch? You read the book? The end of Willie Lynch, they tell you that one way to overcome these people is to reverse the roles. Yeah, for sure. Maybe put the woman on top, make her independent, strong, independent black woman, and make the man docile and weak. All he cares about is a new Louis belt, some money, a bad beat. Oh, yeah, that's what he cares about. He don't care about the other stuff. He just cares about when he gonna get when he gonna get some and where the money's coming from. And a woman's all she worried about is getting money and getting away from that man. That's all they worried about. So they flipped the road. So now they're independent and we're dependent. You see what I'm saying? So they understood if we put them in sin, we can overcome them. That's where these curses are coming from. They're coming from us not being obedient to God. So we don't understand that there's a God that's over us, that's looking for us, that's requiring something from us. That's why Islam is not useful for our people. That's why Christianity is not useful for our people, because it, it doesn't teach you who you are. It doesn't teach you what you must do. Because right now, everybody thinks that I can just walk around how I want. Go to uh, Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. They think they can just walk around and do whatever they want. Like there's no purpose. Our people walk around when they have no purpose in life. It's just make some money and feel good. You know, just live their life, take care of their family. Which I'm not against the taking care of their family, but just having no real purpose. They get their purpose from the white man. And that's what we're trying to come back, is that, that American dream that our people had. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. So he said the conclusion of the whole matter, meaning the whole purpose of life. The whole purpose of life for us is to fear God. What does it mean to fear God? Respect his command. But also... If you don't do what God says, what happens? Oh yeah, you uh, you so you will matriculate through life, understanding there's a penalty for not for that abide by it. Yeah. That means that it's a penalty. So when you see little, when you see people, uh, it's not always this. But say for instance, you murder somebody, right? Next, you know, you get murdered. People in general move through life without penalties. They don't. They don't. And I was just watching. I don't know if you hip to ask that CEO, but he was saying a, a, a way to ensure. Oh, there go my book. A way to ensure. Uh, that you stand on your purpose and on your grind trying to build wealth or whatever is you have to make sure that if you miss a deadline or that if you miss a step in something that you're supposed to be doing, you there's a penalty for it. Right. And we we loose as a people because we move it through life with no pen no understanding okay. of nobody's penalties. Okay. So what was your name again? Jordan. Jordan. Here. I appreciate y'all, man. All right, I'm gonna finish this out. Keep listening as you go. Absolutely. All right? Check. You got a fire? I do. Check it out, bro. I will. Understand? We need you. Okay. All right, bro. Check that out. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is 